Well, hey there, and a lovely big welcome to our webinar. Um, we are live. Sally is with me from uh, just outside Oxford, and uh, I am in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> and it's it's been the most beautiful day here. So um, I'm going to find out just now whereabouts um, all of you guys are listening in from. So if you just go into the chat box, um, in a minute, Sally is going to just be reading out the names um, and whereabouts you're from. So we'll give you a second to do that. And the other thing is, I'm going to get Sally to set up uh, a poll. And it's just a simple yes or no answer, because of course we're here to talk about um, about business models for piano teachers this evening. So the question is, do you consider yourself a small business owner? Um, and while Sally does that, I'm just going to shout out to some of you who are joining. We have Louise from Cambria. Hello, Louise. We have Sharon uh, from Hertfordshire. We have Lisa, who says hi from Calgary uh, in Canada. Hey there. What time is it in Calgary? It's obviously not the same time it is here. We have Christy from Texas. We have Jilly from Leeds. Lots of you are hopping in here. Gareth from um, Frankfurt. <clears throat> from Frank Frankfurt in Germany. Uh, Hetty from Alberta. Laurie from Oklahoma. Uh, we have Georgina from Kent in the UK. Luna from South Devon. Diane from Christchurch in New Zealand. Uh, Pamela from Winchester. Sally, I'm going to get out of breath. <laughs> it's fabulous, isn't it? We're coming in from all over the world here. So, um, yeah, we've got Katrina. Yay, made it to a live one, Katrina. Well done, you. And Rachel from Wisconsin in the USA. We've got Chris from London, Cornwall. Uh, sorry, that was uh, Chris from London. Annette from Cornwall. Hi, Annette. Susan from Maryland. Lisa says it's 1 p.m. in Calgary. 1 p.m. Okay. And uh, somebody else coming in. I'm sorry to everybody we missed. Okay. Oh, now we have Gloria. And now I don't know how to pronounce this. A spoke Spokane, is it? In the USA? Spokane? Tell us if we're wrong. We might need some phonetic, phonetic spelling going on there. And you should see that I have actually put that um, poll out there. And I can see quite a lot of you are already answering that. That's fantastic. Uh, if you've just come online, just go over to the poll that you can see and just give us an answer, a yes or a no. Just to warn you, if you've not been on a webinar before, there's about a 30 second time lag. So when we ask something, um, we don't get any results or we don't hear from you for about 30 seconds after that, which is why you might sometimes find that we are um, yeah, filling up space a little bit as, as, as we do this. So let's just go over to the poll. And um, at the moment, we have 83%. Fantastic. 83% of us think we are small business owners and just 17% um, don't think they are business owners. So that's that's a really good a good starting point because, yes, we are all indeed small businesses. Absolutely. Even though sometimes it can be... I know it can be difficult um, from my own experience. I'm going to be starting off tonight's webinar talking a little bit about my background um, <clears throat> as a piano teacher and um, as an entrepreneur, as, uh, as, a, as a small business owner. Um, because I do think that if we take the business side of things seriously, we can we can start to see really big changes. I think um, a lot of what our profession lacks is is realizing that when we see ourselves as small business owners, we can make a much bigger impact. We are much more organized um, and we can help more people. We can reach more people with, uh, with music. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to throw out another question and then I'm going to get into the slides. And the question, it's going to be the first slide that you're going to see is, what is your biggest frustration as a small business owner? So I'm going to hop off, go and get these slides up and Sally is going to be watching your comments coming in. And this evening, I'd really like you to interact with us as much as possible on this on this live call, um, because, of course, that is the wonder of technology when, of course, technology works, which so far it is. 
Um, so, Sally, I'm going to let you just look at the chat and I am going to hop over and see if I can get my um, screen sharing. OK. All right, Sharon. So, you know, what is your what is your biggest frustration? Um, it's very easy for us to kind of get frustrated with with parents, with pupils and things like that. Um, let's see what you all think of that that question that Sharon just asked. Here it is. What is your biggest frustration as a small business owner? And we've got responses all coming in. Now, one of the beauties of this web, webinar system is that you can all read each other's responses. So I'm just going to shut down my screen so you can't see me and then you'll get Sharon's screen share. OK, um, so we've got lots of people coming in now. Um, Lisa saying people not taking me seriously as a business owner and thinking this is just a hobby. Yes, I agree, uh, Lisa. I think that is quite a quite a problem, really. Um, other people are saying the admin. Yes. In addition to all the teaching. Yes, it, it, it can be a real struggle, can't it? Especially at the beginning uh, of the years, at the beginning of terms. Um, and Marilyn saying no perks. I'm presuming by that, Marilyn, you mean, um, well, you, you tell us what, what you think you mean. Um, oh, Gloria's coming in. It's Spock Cam. Thank you very much, Gloria. OK. Sharon, I'll just say we can't see your screen at the moment. It's fairly black. So maybe you could just, we could see it for a moment and now it's gone again. And Caroline is saying a limited income. Yeah. Um, well, maybe today's webinar will help to dispel that idea. Um, okay. Caroline. Um, can you still hear me? I can still hear you and I can see you and I. But okay, I can't I've see your screen. OK, the screen. And I think I was trying to talk there and you weren't able to hear me. So let me just see if I can. It's when I turn my screen share on, I seem to lose connection. So I'm going to just try that again. OK, I'll keep going for the moment. Um, yeah, Georgina is talking about how much work goes on that Lisa says, how much work goes on behind the scenes. Absolutely. It's it's one of these one of these ideas of that the, the cogs have to go. Um, we have to work really quite hard, don't we, to make the whole thing appear very smoothless, smoothless, very smooth and effortless. Um, that's OK, it. so we can see you. We can see you. Yes. Yep, lovely. Yeah. Yep, well. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Um, okay, lovely. If I put it full so screen, does it still work? Yes, that's still fine. Yep, that's good. So we're still getting <laughs> lots of lots of responses coming in here. So um, Susan says finding appealing music that is technically achievable from level three and up. Okay, that's that's uh, that's an interesting one. That is Susan. Um, yeah, it, there's so much. We are so incredibly lucky as pianists that. Um, we have so much music that it's sometimes it's actually hard to, to choose. Um, we have a kind of a developing repertoire list here in the Curious Piano Teachers. So, for example, we've just been doing advanced. This this current box is about advanced repertoire. And um, we've got about a four or five page list of music that is suitable for adva more advanced level people. Um, and let's see, Cheryl. Yeah, sometimes dealing with stressful parents sometimes stressful dealing with parents yes demanding parents and again i think you know what what sharon's going to be taking you through today will will help you to realize that we can actually manage the expectations of parents and it's about us thinking through our whole business model that can actually determine what the parents make of what we offer them um so Chris is just saying he considers himself a professional educator, but not a commercial business. OK, um, I'll leave that one up to to Sharon to come back to. And Rachel. OK, this is interesting. Teaching in schools. Um, are you a UK based teacher, Rachel? I wonder whether this happens in America at all. So we've got any American <clears throat> teachers out there or Canadian teachers. Do you ever get employed to go and teach the piano in a school? It does happen in the UK. Um, not sure what happens there in, in America or in other parts of the world. OK, so people are still coming in with some some lovely 
uh, frustrations. I say lovely frustrations. It's good to share, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's good to share frustrations. And actually, uh, Rachel is in the US. Okay, that's really interesting, Rachel, that we've got that as there. Uh, so you're saying teach in the school during the day and there is an expectation that the tuition is very low following from those teachers who taught there before me. So it's about raising those ex expectations, I would say, Rachel, for um, teaching in school um, and maybe going in with a, with a different business model to the schools and presenting it slightly differently. Um, Alta's talking about new pupils, finding new pupils, people contacting and asking about fees and then not responding, and people opting for unqualified teachers because they're cheap. Yeah, mm. it's a problem that we do have. Sharon, over to you. Okay, lovely. I'm just going to confirm that you can... Everyone can hear me and everyone can see my screen. I so certainly you. can. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So just a few people type in as well. Um, and if there's any problems, then Sally can let me know. So um, I'm going to <clears throat> start with a little bit about me. Um, I have been a piano teacher um, since 1997. And I very much fell into the profession. I never, if someone had said to me, you're going to be a teacher, I would have said, I don't think so. If someone had said, you're going to be a piano teacher, I would have said, absolutely not. Because um, it just, it, it was not where my interests lay. So I fell into the, the, the profession, started to do it on a very part-time basis. Um, and again, it would be good to know um, who, here on this on on the call today is is doing a little bit of piano teaching on the side sally maybe you can set up a poll because it'd be quite interesting just to see how many people are relying upon piano teaching for their full income and uh versus the number of people who are essentially supplementing their income with piano teaching uh but doing either another full-time or or part-time job um and the one thing I will say is that when I started teaching, um, I didn't do a great job. But the one thing I did very early on, and I was I was in my late teens at the time, and the one thing I did do was I got involved in professional development very, very early on. And I went on lots of courses and that lasted for, well, it's, it's still happening. Uh, but for 10 years, I, I studied intensely at lots of things because I live in Northern Ireland there was not a lot on offer here so I was flying to London on on a very very frequent basis for for that 10 year period um, and after I did my master's in music education uh, which is where I met Sally Sally was my uh, my master's supervisor um, I then worked alongside Sally on the piano teachers course, which is based at the Purcell School, uh, again, just outside London. But as happens in 2011, uh, I got married and I realized that all of this traveling pretty much needed to stop because it was really quite challenging um, having, to, having to travel and and manage manage that that new life where you don't have just just as much freedom to do uh, what you would have done previously so in the same year i decided um i wanted to set up more of a business i wanted just to explore a little bit more because i was i was curious and i was pretty sure that Many people seem to take piano teaching as a, you know, this this is a hobby. Um, you, you do it because you love doing it. And yes, we do love doing it, but it needs to be so much more than that. And if people do not respect what it is we do, um, if they do not realize that we are worth paying for what, for the services that we offer, um, I was pretty sure that in my own experience that I was projecting so much of that onto the parents. The fact that um, I didn't feel like I was, a, whether it was a serious musician, whether it was a serious piano teacher, whether it was a serious business owner, I was kind of in the background with everything. I wasn't doing it confidently. And so in 2011, I got a business coach. Now, 
I remember the experience well because I I remember having a three hour meeting and at the end of it, my business coach said, okay, these are the options. And the cheapest option um, to have business coaching with her started at 500 pounds a month. Now, as a piano teacher, my instant reaction was, I can't afford that. I said, Lisa, there is no way I can afford to pay that. Um, and obviously, as you can see here from the picture, I was getting married. So it was another reason where I just thought, I, I can't do this. And she said to me, Sharon, can you afford not to? And of course, she just talked to me, inspired me hugely within those, those three hours. And I thought, I've got to make this work. I have got to make this work. Um, and I had a vision to do something for the piano teachers in Northern Ireland. And so I accepted the offer um, and I took on, I, I then was, she was my business coach for the next year. And she helped me set up Evoco, which is uh, Northern Ireland's music education organization. And we specialized in training piano teachers. And again, it was in a, in a response to the fact that, you know, I was going over uh, to help train piano teachers in England. People were saying to me, but we need it right here. And it was a very, very scary thing to do. I mean, looking back, um, it seems, I mean, it's actually been quite interesting pulling together these, these photographs uh, earlier on today. Um, and I, I look back with just such fond, fond memories of, of what I was doing back in, in 2012. But it took a lot of courage. And I know that it was my business coach that really steered me and pointed me in, in, in the direction that I needed to go. And I think as well, just having that accountability, somebody who was behind me um, for those days, for those weeks that I wondered, who am I to, to think that I can, I can even do this, that I can achieve this? Um, and so I ran courses for piano teachers, helping them to achieve their, their teaching diplomas. And here's another picture in 2014 where we had a, a group of piano teachers who graduated with a number of teaching diplomas from associate to licentiate level. And then in 2015, Sally, as you already know, she was my uh, my master's supervisor uh, on that course at Reading University. We got in touch again. She came over to Northern Ireland to do uh, a one day course for me. And you'll see here a picture of a beautiful beach. It's a beach in County Down. And we had coffee uh, as at the Curious Piano Teachers, we always do. It always started with a cup of coffee. And Sally and I had a conversation that ultimately led to the establishment of the Curious Piano Teachers, which um, as you probably know, is it's an online organization that trains piano teachers or helps and supports um, them around the world. So today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit um, about new ideas for business models that we can use as piano teachers. Um, and I do feel that when we get this right, we we think of ourselves in a very different way when we take the business side seriously. So often we can feel guilty. Um, and I'm sure that many of you have been in that position of we're, we're musicians, the whole light, like, the whole concept of making money. And I think that's what business is, is so often associated with, with the hard nosed business people, the people who are out there just to make money, to walk over people. But of course, we can use business in a, in a much more powerful way than that. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you this evening. So I'm going to get Sally, I know she's probably got this poll ready. Um, and what I want to know at this point is, do you use a one-to-one -one business model? Uh, and by that, we mean, do you teach uh, students on a one-to-one -one basis in your piano teaching studios. So Sally, I'm gonna just, whenever you've got the results of that, get you to uh, hop back and, in and share those with me. 
sorry, Sharon, I'm just putting putting this in. Um, That's okay. <laughs> the results of the other one. Hey, oh right, and I'm just having to do this one again. So there we go. Um, yes. Okay, that's going now. Um, so the, the, the results of, of some of the other ones. Oh, yes, everybody's saying yes. 100% <laughs> is a yes. Okay. I <laughs> maybe think, we, should we should maybe refine that. Could we ask so. a question to see if, if people use another business model alongside that? So what I mean is, do you... In addition to the one-to-one -one model, do you, for example, teach group lessons? Um, do you run any online courses? So we'll keep yeah. it quite simple. Do you yeah. use okay. another business model as well as this, or do you solely teach on a one-to-one -one basis? Yeah, I'm going to create another poll, folks. We're just going to see if we can get a better. Okay. Need to keep talking, Sharon, while I just type this. Okay, well done. I'm actually I'm going to move on to the next the next slide. Um, so both of us, it seems to be all of us, are currently doing these one to one piano lessons. This is essentially what we're doing. We're trading time for money. Um, the one to one business model, it's not a scalable one, and the one thing that has struck me um, and one of the reasons that Sally and I set up the Curious Piano Teachers is one-to-one -one models can only help a limited number of people. And I'm going to just hop back to those slides um, of Evoco. This was my um, this was my business that I established back in 2012. And I was finding that I was maxing out once I was helping about 40 to 50 piano teachers a year. I couldn't help any more people than that. Um, and even if you can additionally, additionally type into the chat box, roughly how many one-to-one -one students you have, because I'm guessing that you're actually not able to help probably more than about 100, 120 people. Can, I've got some results here for you. Okay, go for it. Interesting. One-to-one um, -one only. It's continually fluctuating, but 50%. Um, okay. One-to-one -one plus groups is 44%. And one-to-one -one plus something else, which was the a third option, was uh, is 6%. But th th these numbers are fluctuating. So it's fairly, it's fairly evens between the one-to-one -one only and the one-to-one -one plus groups at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're both around... The forty-seven percent, forty-eight percent. Okay, I'd be really curious to know what that additional six percent. So the people um, who are doing something, um, else, yes, they're doing one, -to one. They're doing groups. What's the other thing that you're you're offering? Um, and, but and I'm I'm going to say um, I'm going to end this poll. I'm going to put another poll in as well. Let's see what size your groups are as well. I think that would be interesting um oh. okay so i'm ending that poll thank you everybody for that so we've we've and en we've ended up that 47 percent each on the one-to-one -one and the one-to-one -one plus groups so we're okay. interested now what your something else is if you're one of the five percent could you add that into the chat box um and if you're teaching in groups i'm going to see if i can just put in another question um let's, uh okay and again um, <clears throat> If um, you guys can type into the chat box roughly how many one-to-one -one students you have, because again, the the downside of this model is we can only help a limited number of people. And of course, we all know how much music can enrich um, the lives of, of people. There are there are so many amazing and wonderful stories out there of how music um, it's 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 got a very transforming power and. Our job is is very very important. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up the next slide, um, and then I'm going to wait for Sally to come back in and just give us a few more results. Yeah. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about 
these things that you can add on um, and you'll see here I've called them add on options because of course I'm not going to suggest that you um, do away with your one to one. I'm going to suggest that you add something onto that um, and perhaps in time you will end up then doing that add on um, on a, on a full time basis. But certainly to get you going, you can there are very, very simple ways that you can get started. OK, Sally, back over to you again. Yes, indeed. So we've got um, six percent have two people in the groups. Um, Sixty three percent have three to five people and 31 percent have six to ten people. So that's okay. that's the bi biggest proportion. Nearly two thirds have between three to five uh, people in the group. And um, what we didn't ask is whether those uh, whether those people we're talking children here or adults but um i mean maybe a few of you can just pop that into the chat box um so we've got lots of things as well coming through about how many one-to-ones people people teach i did my research that i did on uk piano teachers back in 2010 showed that on average and there was an enormous range of uh, individual teachers but on average we have 22 pupils each 22 one-to-one -one pupils each. Um, so it's interesting to see. And Gareth, Gareth here, I think Gareth was in Frankfurt, has bang on 22. Um, but there is a big, big range of, of, of um, numbers coming in. Um, so we've got the Caroline who's on the highest your, number. I'm just looking. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of that. Here we go. So I've got 50 so far. So, um What's that one, Deb? Debbie say, no, sixty-three with Pamela. Um, Thirty one to one, twenty-three. So sixty. Um, okay. Fifteen, fourteen, five. Oh, ninety. Katrina's on ninety. Okay. <laughs> one to one with twenty-minute lessons. Oh, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm feeling breathless just thinking about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think Katrina's the biggest one on 92. Sure. And, of course, just looking back again, um, it's, it's that thing that we can only help a limited number of people. And um, 90 is a huge number of people. But, of course, when you look at these other models that, I'm going to be presenting. I want you to think about just how many more people we can we can reach with this wonderful gift of music. So the first one is, um, and I'm going to be taking these one at a time, um, supplementing the one-to-one -one lesson model with group lessons. Now we know from the polls that have been done that already a lot of you guys are already doing this, and I'm going to go through a couple of points and hopefully it will give you a little bit more clarity those of you who are already doing group lessons um so do feel free to just keep typing into the chat box because i'd be interested to know whether or not this is this is what you're doing so um with those group lessons um i'm just wondering whether anyone has a clear structure so for example do you have a particular a clearly defined set of learning outcomes um, and does that group class last, for example, for eight weeks or 12 weeks? Uh, so do people buy an actual package of something? Um, what are the payment options? Um, is it a one-time payment or do you have a standing order where it's done in installments? Um, so again, Sally, I'm just going to get you to any feedback that's coming in on that just to um to, sh to share that i will yeah. say that yeah go ahead no no I, I was just going to say that um most most people seem to be uh saying they've got children on the whole but but some there are some adults as well in in the group so keep going okay um because i do think that the one thing that as piano teachers we so often fail to do is have clearly defined learning outcomes. Um, very often, if we're thinking about, um, again, obviously a lot of you are teaching children, parents will be the ones who are 
in a sense, the customers. OK, so they're the ones who are actually paying for lessons and have a think about just how often parents know what it is their child is going to be achieving in a particular time frame. Now, I know that many of you are probably going to be saying children will learn at different rates and yes they will but if you think about a, a primary school curriculum there is a, a clear set of defined learning outcomes that's you know that's what children are going to learn in the space of of a, a one academic year but so often as piano teachers we just we start them and uh some of us may plan lessons very well others may just be rather ad hoc about it um, and just plan it as as we're actually teaching the lesson um, and obviously having lesson plans before lessons and having um, termly lesson plans with learning outcomes is is a really important thing to do so that there is a clear sense of progression but um, with group lessons we can we can plan something with a structure it could be 12 weeks it could be six months it could be a full academic year and this is research that came from the british journal of music education uh, just a couple of years ago and it's about individual lessons and how they they benefit from the addition of lessons in small groups um, because these additional small group lessons are it's what enables pupils to become responsible and reflective musicians and you obviously there are quite a percentage of you already have small group lessons but i wonder how many have lessons where you're teaching pupils on a one-to-one -one basis plus also a weekly group lesson and I know that very often the resistance can be that as teachers it's very easy to think parents just wouldn't pay for them um, and if you go to YouTube at some point I'm sure many of you know Dr Julie Nair of Piano Safari and in there there is if you put in something like a group piano teaching there is a video of Julie being interviewed uh, with regards to group group piano lessons and it's very interesting what she says in that interview and she's saying that you know if if this is how you present it to parents if this is how your studio policy works parents are not going to be coming back to you saying oh that's going to be you know I, I only want the one-to-one -one lesson so it is up to us to think about what sort of package we present to parents and that we're clear about what we're offering um, because I think so much of the time we assume that parents understand what it is um, they're, they're getting when their children are, are sent to lessons with us. They very often don't. And I think that's what we need to be a lot clearer about. We need to be very, very specific. Um, and parents will value uh, understanding what it is they're going to get at the end of an academic year. So. Um, my next question is, what ideas do you have for group lesson topics? So I'm going to then come back in just a moment and Sally can share some of those things. OK, um, thank you, Sharon, for that interesting, um, thought provoking. I just want to go back to Katrina, who was teaching 92 um, pupils. And I love your comment, Katrina. She says it's great but exhausting. And I can't see myself still doing it in 15 years time. And I think for piano teachers, this is one of the things, where, where is our career progression? Where do you go? Or are you just going to get burnt out? So we do for our own health, both our mental health and our musical health, um, do need to be thinking of different models that we can we can use, just because it's been, you know, the, the model that has been uh, prevalent in the last 120 years doesn't mean to say we've got to uh, continue with it. In fact, at the Curious Piano Teachers, we pride ourselves on just mixing things up a bit and doing things differently and actually getting encouragement from each other to come up with these new ideas. Um, so different people coming in. Kimberly's got people paying by the trim trimester during the school year. 
Um, and the tuition, this sounds a really good model, Kimberly. Um, private lessons, group lessons, and you have about six a year and repertoire classes of about four a year. Fantastic. Really what sounds as though that's really, really well thought through. And again, we've got various other um, people in the, in the community who have that same sort of thing going on. Um, Chris is, has got more of a problem, though, because he, he I think, is saying um, he's offered lots of extra opportunities, but parents seem to have a very fixed mindset. Um, music is not their aim end game. Uh, being able to chat to other parents about their children's activities, that's what the parents are after. Yeah, that 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 is a problem. Um, it's our problem. We've we've we're the people. We've got to shift that. We've got to be absolutely purposeful um, in in putting forward our message, really. And gradually, things will shift. Um, Hetty is having uh, run my classes yearly, thirty four to thirty six weeks. And again, lots of different options going on from Hetty about how people can can pay. Um, and that's using the common approach. Yeah, that's that's a really yeah. solid place to start, um, Annette. And I think the for me, the common approach really shines. For those of you who are based in America, the common approach was a framework. It's all freely available. You can Google it. Uh, a framework that was put together by some of the leading music educators uh, back in the 90s, I think. And uh, there is a piano specific one. The technical side of things, I think, is fantastic. It goes into lots of detail. The others are slightly flakier, but in fact, my my um, piano framework bases its technical side on, um, which is a, um, a a framework really for uh, progression through the piano. Um, bases the technique on the on the uh, common approach. Um, Alter, he's saying. Ah, oh, yeah. Older children are so busy that it's nearly impossible to find a time where they can all come to do a lesson together. How would you deal with that? I don't know whether anybody's got any suggestions or whether that's something you'd like to return to later, Sharon. I think it's it's one of those things because, yes, I absolutely agree. There is um, parents do send their children to lots and lots of different things um, and getting timetables worked out. Um, I would go to say that it's what we're wanting to do is help parents push the music lessons up the priority list. Mm. Um, and I know that years ago I was really bad at actually um, one understanding what my philosophy was and two communicating it effectively to parents. And I know Sally, this is something that we have um, considered with our members in yes. in the community because of course when we when we have a very clear a very strong philosophy when when we know why we do what we do um and when we have sat down and considered how we communicate that with parents because i think so often i know certainly looking back on, on my own experience part of my problem was actually not communicating clearly enough with parents and where i was probably just not very compelling about it um and i think if you're almost apologetic for something um it's it's not always a good thing uh for example now i have a different approach and one i know my philosophy two i know how to communicate it with prospective parents um or with prospective adult pupils and when we've got the clarity when we understand how important music is um, in in people's lives generally um, and how it develops you know we're not just talking musical skills here we're talking about skills for life um, provided of course music is taught um, in an effective way because again my background was i was taught for a piano for a very long time by a teacher who didn't do any professional development and where i ended up probably being put off piano lessons more than more than anything else so um that is where i think we can we can really shine when we sit down we work out our philosophy we're clear we can communicate clearly with parents and um at that point then parents are realizing that actually the lessons with us are are one of the more valuable things compared to what other 
elements, what other extracurricular things are are on offer. Mm. So I don't know if that. I, I, but I just want. I just wanted to say, Sharon, I think a lot of us can can really um, empathise with with that idea of, you know, if we're when we often in our teaching, especially if we're just starting out and for actually for a very long time, as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't really clear about what it was I was teaching and how I wanted to teach it. I knew I was quite good at doing it, but I hadn't taken the time to really sit down and pull out the threads of what it was. And as you say, back in January, I think it was, we had in the Curiosity Lounge the opportunity, didn't we, for um, teachers to come and work through this whole philosophy uh, of, of their piano teaching. We know that they found that incredibly uh, useful. And just wanted to say one other thing that that is um, you know, people are talking about difficult parents or um, uh, parents who just want their their children to learn the piano just as something to, to kind of almost brag about. Um, of course, we don't have to say yes to every parent that if we are sending out, a, if we once we've thought through our cl clear message, once we've thought through our message, we then send out a clear signal. This is the type of teacher I am. These are the kinds of things I teach. And therefore, this is the kind of pupil that I want and the parents that I want. And and I know, um, you know, you we have the right and absolute freedom to say to parents in, in a very nice way, we're not going to be a good fit. And again, mm -hmm. I think if you have a website and you have a clear message that says exactly what it is you do, then you will attract the right kind of people. You have to set the intention. Absolutely, Absolutely. have to set out there. The, the, you know, the law of attraction says you will uh, attract the people that you ask for, basically. So think about yeah. who you want and then ask for them. And I think the other thing that just links in there with what you're saying, Sally, is, um, again, the need for contracts. Um, the way I work is um, I will contract for um, a, an academic year. And there is, again, a, a certain payment um, system. Um, I use standing order. And again, Sally was mentioning there, not a good fit. It's, it's actually, it's a really good phrase because um, this is the way I work. If, if a parent is not prepared to, to sign a contract um, before lessons commence that agree to my policies, then I've got to say, I don't back down on that. And I think that's another thing that as piano teachers, we probably do way, way too much is that we get a parent who uh, makes us feel guilty that we have actually asked them to sign a contract, that we're asking them to commit to a full academic year of lessons. And quite frankly, if they don't want to do that, then they're not a good fit for us. And I think we've got to just be careful that we don't um, as can be very easy to do, that we don't just sway over and end up giving the parent the, the system that they want. Um, so I think being very, very firm about that is, is good practice. Um, and parents and students will value it as well. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a couple of ideas for group lesson topics and then I'm going to move on to the next I'm one. I'm not sure we came out with any lesson topics in the end. We're all too busy talking about piano lessons and things. Kimball is, um, Kimball is just talking about group lessons and saying how she sets the whole schedule for the whole school year over the summer. So everybody has the schedule well in advance um, and the, they have lots of fun in the group lessons and students don't like to miss them. Um, so I think that's another really good point to make. Thank you, Kimberly. You know, if you set the dates well in advance and so nothing is last minute, but they go out on a calendar um, at the beginning of the um, academic year and everybody has it and make it so much fun that they just can't bear to not be there. I love it. Um, so we haven't actually exactly. got any topics. We're all too busy talking about other things, Sharon, I'm afraid. Well, we can, think we can, we can still be thinking about that. Type it in yeah. if you if you. Have you got any thoughts on that? Okay, so this the next one is online follow up. Now, uh, very very recently, well I shouldn't say very recently, within the last year, Sally and I um, have got to know uh, Professor Rena uh, Upetus, and Rena, I actually had the privilege of meeting her uh, just outside Dublin uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
and um, she has researched something that I'm just going to flick to the next slide. Um, it's called Music Tool Suite and cadenza is an element of this and it's where pupils can track and time practice sessions they can set and manage goals they can share recordings um, with their teachers they can reflect on their learning and they can earn these badges when they meet their targets for teachers they can create practice plans for pupils during the lessons uh, they can review the pupils progress between the lessons uh, streamline record keeping, they can comment on the recordings that their people send and they can answer questions during the week. So if you haven't heard about this, I would encourage you to hop onto our blog, which is thecuriouspianoteachers.org forward slash blog. Quickest way to find uh, a four part blog series that um, Rena has written for us is if you just put cadenza into the search. And we all know that it's what happens between lessons that is what counts. And I know we've said in the past that there are, I think it's 10,050 minutes between a weekly 30 minute lesson. So yes, there, there are lots of things that our, our pupils need to be able to do between lessons, but so often, um, having a check-in somewhere in the middle of that can be very useful. Um, and Sally, I'm gonna get you to set up another poll. I'd be interested to know how many weekly lessons teachers have with those one-to-one -one people. So are we just talking one lesson per week or do some of you out there do see that people for twice or maybe even three times a week? That would be quite interesting. But generally, uh, I know here in the UK, it's a, a once weekly lesson, sometimes maybe even a, a once fortnightly lesson. But this idea of online follow up is where you can use Cadenza, um, this online notebook tool, and it's where music pupils and teachers can share between lessons. And that is something that you can charge for. Um, and it's something that we are hopefully going to do in a future curiosity box because again when I met with Rena I've been talking to her about this and I do think that teachers need a little bit of guidance in terms of how they can actually charge for for example as I've mentioned there this idea that pupils are sharing the recordings that they make with their teachers midway through and then the teachers are watching that recording and, and giving comments. So there's a, just a little bit more teacher interaction going on. It can be done very simply. It can be done very, very easily uh, with this Cadenza tool. Um, and it's free is the other great thing. So if you haven't heard about it, aren't using it yet, I do encourage you to go over um, and find out a little bit more. And again, as I say, the plan is with Rena to, in time, we will actually pull together some thoughts about how teachers can actually charge for this. Um, so the next and the final thing we're just going to look briefly can at I, is the idea. Can I Sorry, just come back to you on the poll? Yes. Fairly decisive, 100% one lesson a week. Okay, <laughs> so that's an interesting thing to think about then. That idea um, of checking in with your pupil so they're not having to come back into your studio um, because again, of course, for parents, that can be a bit of an issue. Um, all of the time that they spend in the car driving their kids to, um, to lessons. Uh, the idea is that you do this online, but that there is another paired element uh, within that. So the third and the final thing we're going to be looking at is this idea of supplementing one-to-one -one lessons with an online course. Now, this is something that, of course, Sally and I are, are doing, um, albeit for piano teachers. Um, but it's this idea of converting your skills, your expertise into a product that is available online. And this is where you can start to see the freedom creep in. And where you can serve an unlimited number of people because of course you're able to create the content once 
and you know a hundred people can see that a thousand people and i will say that when sally and i had this conversation about setting up the curious piano teachers we didn't even know it was going to be called the curious piano teachers back then um and we had a lot we've had many thousands of hours um over the past couple of years uh but it was this thing is this actually going to work and i remember doing a course it was an online course it was a business course um it was very expensive and it was only for 12 weeks but it did allow me to realize how just how well i could learn something online now i'm not suggesting for a second that we all create some sort of content um and we just put it up there online and that's our piano lessons because no of course pupils need interaction and there is huge benefits of um of actually being um, physically in in the room with people but i think this is something that we do certainly in in this in the world that we live today where we are able to do an increasing amount of learning online and the big advantage is we stop trading time for money um it's where you create something once and you get it out and you help an unlimited number of people so for example uh this is just one idea that i'm throwing out there imagine you run a grade one theory course called making it practical um, because of course we know that theory can so often be taught in a way that is it, it's it's so divorced from the practical musicianship element um, so that's one idea and of course the key thing to creating an, an online course it's these six steps first one is believe you can do it and believe that it will work um, the next step is to plan and research uh, so what sort of things are people needing? Third thing is create the content. The fourth thing is you can trial it with your own pupils. The fifth thing is get a feedback and tweak it and then get it out there. Serve a much wider audience. Now, I'd be really curious to know what your thoughts are on this. So I am going to get you um, to type into the chat box just a simple yes or no. Have you ever considered helping people in a, in a musical context with an online course? So just type yes or no into the chat and I'm gonna go across to Sally in a minute for your responses. And if you're actually doing something, I'd be really interested to know what it is. Now, we're not talking about courses for teachers because I know that there are courses out there um, that are enabling piano teachers to learn online, but I'm actually talking about doing something where you're helping piano pupils. Sally? Yeah, we, we're getting a whole mixture of answers um, with yes and no, <laughs> but there were quite a few yeses there. Um, Kimberlyn's saying she loves the idea, but not sure what direction to go or how to start. Um, okay. Ted is asking a question, helping by teaching online or helping by building a course? Um, at the moment, we're talking about building a course, but obviously you are teaching when you're building a course, aren't you? Yes. I think really the, the question is, have you ever considered um, doing something online, mm. um, reaching people, helping people with an online course? Yeah, um, because as you say, there's so much, so much technology around. Um, so Dawn's come up with an idea. She says maybe she has lots of experience, so maybe sharing repertoire ideas. Yeah, absolutely, is something you could do. Deborah's using Skype as a way to have lessons when they're not physically able to come to their lessons. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Any other people want to share some of their? Those of you that have put in a yes for creating an online course, um, you'd like to share your your ideas for what that might be. Um, or even if you've actually created an online course um, and how it went down with 
with people. Um, yeah. I think that's all we've got on that at the moment until people get, get typing again, Sharon. Lovely. Thanks, Sally. Um, so if it's something you've never considered doing, this this webinar is just simply putting that idea in your head because I'm not saying it's an easy route. Sally and I have done this and um, I think, Sally, we can we can both say it's not been easy. <laughs> but it's been... <laughs> Being Sally's laughing, but it has been so worth it because um, what we know for sure is that um, people do learn through online content. And I know that if any of you have been seeing the, the testimonials that we've been posting this week on our Facebook page um, from members of the community, um, it's what we're doing online is is definitely changing um, and transforming piano teachers teaching and there is no reason why online courses cannot help and uh, and support the learning that um, that you're able to give in terms of in terms of piano pupils and I've got a quote here from Michael Hyatt and it says this never limit your vision based on your current resources. So you may be thinking right now, well, yes, I would love to be able to offer an online course. Um, I would love to be able to have something where I don't just generate revenue from it, but um, I also get to help and support lots of people in their, in their musical learning. You're maybe thinking, I just, I don't know where to start. Um, and it's maybe the one thing that's holding back your vision. What I would say is get a blank piece of paper, get, get a sheet of paper, put the ideas down. Um, I know that Sally and I did this many times. Hmm. And, um, it, it is amazing where things grow, provided you do take it a step at a time and provided you believe that it is actually possible and, and you can do it. And sometimes I think that we limit ourselves based on the fact that we just, we don't think we can do it. And I know that certainly looking back on on a couple of, when I think back to when I had my business coach, only I had her there. Um, I don't think I would be doing anything um, other than just teaching one-to-one -one piano pupils at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sally. Yeah, I, I, you can tell I'm itching to say something, can't you? Um, no, I I, <laughs> because I, I was just thinking, you know, it, it means for all of us going out of our comfort zone. And certainly Sharon and I have been well out of our comfort zones in what we've been doing because everything was new to begin with. And yet mm. it has been such fun and such an adventure. And to be frank, it has it has fed so much into what we offer as piano teachers and change the way possibly even that that we teach and um i was then reminded well yesterday i had a bit of a luxury in that i sat for an hour and and read a book it was an ebook but it was called teach like a pirate and that just appealed to me immensely um having a bit of you know uh, swashbuckling in a piano lesson i think is really important and the first thing this chap um i've forgotten what his name is but i've got a quote here from him and he's saying spend more time as a teacher spend more time on your passions hobbies and outside areas of interest in other words away from just the piano and teaching music and and then seek ways to bring this into your classroom for us our piano studio because he says watch your life light up with a new energy as you rekindle the feelings you had for the passions of your younger days. But try new things, really, he says. It's not just good for your life. It's great for your teaching. Exploring the world and your passions allows you to bring a new perspective and energy into your classroom. It allows you to become a powerful role model for your students. And I just thought, absolutely that. You know, we have got to cultivate as many different passions in our life. And that can be a business passion as much as a musical passion. And sometimes if we're too narrow in our focus, I'm teaching the piano, then our pupils don't get the creative, passionate musician that actually we all are inside because we just get too focused on 
the notes, the technique, how we do this, that, or the next thing with our repertoire. And the more creative we are, the more creative we become. Mm. And I think it, it also, um, I mean, Sally, we've obviously been doing this together. And I, I know for sure that if either one of us had taken this on by ourselves, it would not have gone as far. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the other thing for you guys out there who are listening on this call this evening to consider because so often businesses, um, we're, we're self-employed business people. Um, but it's, it's that thought of how can I work with others? Because there is no doubt that when, when we do this, when we work with others, um, we, we spark off each other. And again, I know that Sally will agree with, with that, the, the idea that when we do things together, um, we, we are, we are stronger. Hmm. Yeah. We're quite often, one of us is stuck. And then we just have a conversation about it. And within 10 minutes, we're going, oh, well, that's OK. I can do that now. I can do that now. So, you know, talking is good. Sharing is good. Okay. It is. And again, remember that we can, we can do this online because, of we course, Sally and I um, are divided by the, the Irish Sea. <laughs> Although not this week because I'm coming over and we're going to visit Newcastle and that lovely beach. I'm sure. Aren't we, Sharon? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> and the weather's been glorious, so here's hoping it stays like that. Fantastic. Okay, I am going to just, I have a slide up here. Uh, this is a book that I recommend. I don't know how many of you have already read it uh, or heard of it. If you haven't read it, I suggest you go and get a copy and read it. It's inspirational. Called the yeah. E Revisited, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. Um, and the first thing is, so let's make sure that we do consider ourselves as small businesses because that way we can make more effective changes. We can have more impact. Um, people will take us a lot more seriously. What we do um, is not just a hobby. And together we are stronger. And just very, very quickly, uh, I am going to go through a couple of slides because as many of you may or may not be aware, we have something called the community. Um, it is an online membership site and it's where you get to develop your piano teaching skills at home with monthly bundles of online training resources. So you get to learn how to deliver purposeful lessons, uh, revolutionize your teaching strategies, and learn a little bit more about how to increase the profitability of your teaching studio. Um, now, enrollment has been open for this past week. We only open our enrollment um, for a couple of weeks in the year. Uh, this past week has been one of them and enrollment closes tonight um, at midnight, uh, British summer time. So that is just about in three hours time. When you become a member of the community, I hear you say, what am I going to get each month? So we have a different topic every month and we deliver the content by videos, workbooks and resources. We have live webinars just like this one, um, but it's exclusively for the members of our community. Uh, we have a great, an absolutely great Facebook group. And this is where the members come together um, and learn together and share together. Plus, there's also a section inside the membership area where you get bonus resources. So I think currently there is probably, I think about 15 um, webinar replays. Um, there's a ton of discount de deals that are exclusive to members of the community. Um, and the topics that we're gonna be learning about over the next um, couple of months you can see I've got them there. I'm not going to go through them. You can just have a quick read. Um, so, for example, this particular month, we are looking at exploring approaches to teaching advanced repertoire. Uh, we've had Deborah Rambo Sin, one of um, she's based in the, in the US and she's done a terrific, terrific video uh, on messy bases. Um, and we're also, we have just launched today, uh, it's an advanced repertoire project where we're going to be 
teaming up um, members who want to participate and lots of exciting stuff. So I'm not going to go into too much more detail because I know we are out of time, but uh, those are the topics that are coming up. Um, how much does it cost to be a member? Yearly membership. Um, we have a package, uh, so it includes yearly membership uh, plus bonus online training resources worth £200. So that retails at £437. You pay 197 so in dollars that's approximately 255 US dollars, or you've got the monthly membership option. So that is where you can cancel at any time. It's £22 a month. Um, and for that, there isn't any discount or bonuses that apply. But again, there are a, a selection. There's six whole sets of bonus resources when you sign up as a uni member. So looking at how to present the concept of concept, the concept of compound time um, to looking at how you can give effective feedback and ask meaningful questions in lessons. Uh, and I should also say it's not on the page there, but there is um, a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you happen to hop in, decide it's not a good fit for you, because maybe it won't be, um, but you get to actually hop inside and have a look and see. So the link that you need, if you're interested, is right there. Uh, it's www.thecuriouspianoteachers.org forward slash spring dash 2017 dash enrollment. And I know Sally will type that into the chat box uh, so that you've got that link because again, you've got just about three hours left. So I'm going to stop sharing my page and um, I am going to I've had a member sitting <laughs> very quietly and Amy is now going to, I'm going to introduce you to Amy. If I just come back, um, if I turn my... Okay, we've lost Sharon there. Sound and picture now, I believe. But hopefully she'll be joining us again soon. And I'm going to come back in as well. I'm looking a bit close here. Um, Sharon, we can't see you or hear you at the moment. There you go. Fantastic. And I'll try Lovely. not to look around the corner like I did before. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny. When when we came on the call just before we went live, um, I was introducing, I was saying, okay, and Amy's here. And Sally had a peek around and was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> So um, it is lovely to have Amy. I'm actually, I'm at Amy's house tonight because my broadband is so, so terrible. Uh, so we've had, I think, hopefully a pretty signed and vision clear call. Um, so I think I need to get my broadband sorted out. But Amy is one of the members uh, of our community. And I'm just simply going to ask Amy the benefits that you find as a member. Okay, well, whenever I joined the community, I had just come back from maternity leave, so I was a bit, um, I find myself with a bit less time to prepare for lessons than I had done previously. So one of the things that really helped me were the resources. They're, they're very high quality and they're right at my fingertips. So that was a brilliant part of joining the Curious Piano Teachers. And then the other thing is the community aspect and then being part of the Facebook page, the encouragement and support from other teachers um, is just brilliant. And it, it helps, it's quite isolated. And I'm mostly at home with my toddler. So um, to be able to go on there and join that world is pretty amazing. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much. <laughs> Sally, thoughts? Well, thank you, thank you to Amy for 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 sharing that. And um, I'm I'm right in thinking, aren't I, Amy, that your business has grown during your your excursions with the Curious Piano Teachers and before? It would be quite interesting because I know Amy, your um, Amy is trained as as a primary school teacher, mm. um, and I know that you've also done a couple of the courses, the Evoca courses, yes. um, with me. Amy has um, a couple of of piano teaching diplomas. Um, so tell us a little bit more about getting into um, getting into piano teaching because it's not really the career that you were thinking about either. No. Yeah, so I trained as a primary school teacher and um, I was subbing and it really wasn't uh, 
I wasn't enjoying it and I wasn't getting what I wanted out of my career. So um, I met Sharon and came across the VOCO and I did a couple of the courses there and that really transformed my outlook on piano teaching. It was really something I did on the side as a student to make a bit of money. And um, I realized that it could be a career and um, that I could do it uh, professionally and I've I've changed a lot of ways that I um, did my business modeling I now have contracts and my parents all sign up at the start of the year and they pay monthly and I think parents appreciate the professionalism whenever it comes to that sort of thing so that um, and I at the minute I'm doing a theory group lesson and um, I have previously done toddler music, but at the minute, um, I just don't have the space in my schedule to do that. But that was all really inspired by um, meeting other teachers, saying that there was a whole other world that I was missing out on of um, uh, music education, really. It is, and it's, it is amazing how, because I know even, um, Sally, since we've started working together, it is, it is just how th the ideas do come when, when we're not by ourselves yeah when we are working entirely by ourselves there is and especially if as amy's just said um because as some of you know i have a new baby as well 13 weeks old and he just you, you can't move around the same you can't get out the same for um for that particular period in in your life um, but still, we're working and we need to get input um, in some shape or form. So um, I'm just going to hop over to the chat. I'm not so sure if um, people have any questions, um, but I think the one summarising thing that we're wanting to say at this point is that we are stronger together where we're actually coming together, where we're sharing ideas, where um, I've even I, I've heard Sally come out with things that um, have just you know they 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 you suddenly go off on another tangent another thought and it's oh maybe we could do this maybe we could try that and it's just it's the interaction of of thoughts and ideas and I know that's very much why we set up the community because we understood um, that piano teaching for so many piano teachers around the world is just such a it's just so isolating. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, yeah. Sally. Yes. Um, I was going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there was there was something there to say. You know, it it is very isolating, and I think um, we also have this passion that we need to shift piano teachers much more into the central place of music education. And again, as Deborah said, you know, we are better together. We are definitely stronger together as an organization to represent piano teachers and to, to change those perceptions that the parents have about piano teachers. Individually, we are going to struggle to change that historical perception. If you've read the blogs all about the social history, you'll know that those roots are really deep. Um, individually, it's very hard to change that, however professional we are. As a group, though, you know, we are beginning to change those perceptions um, within music education. We're beginning to occupy a more central place. And that's so exciting. And people are beginning to recognize, actually, yes, I am a piano teacher, but that doesn't mean to say I've got to teach in the way that I was taught. No, you don't have to do that. And together we can come up with all sorts of really engaging 21st century relevant um, ideas for, for teaching that have music at the heart and that have, you know, uh, really found good foundations of technical de development there and ability. And we can all support each other all the way through. We'd love you to come and join us basically in the community because yeah. it is such a fun, vibrant, exciting place to be. And, and, and you know, that's me saying that, but that I, that's very truthful. Lovely, I'm just hopping in and having a look here. Um, Katrina says, I hope it's okay to jump in and say how great The Curious Piano Teachers is. Yes, of course it is. Um, I have been a member for a year and I enjoy my teaching far more. Uh, I am bursting with ideas now and never find myself not knowing what to do mm. or having some try and solve a teaching problem. Such a supportive and inspirational community. Thank you so much for hopping in and, and saying that, Katrina. Um, and yes, Kimberly, I will give hugs to Roel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, and Annette has just joined the community and is very excited and uh, looking forward to getting to know you better. 
Um, so I'm just going to put a final call out for any final questions. Um, we are definitely at an end of this call. Um, I also want to just clarify that uh, the replay for this call is exclusively available to members. So um, just in case anyone is wondering where the replay is, there isn't actually going to be a replay video for this particular webinar. But if you are a member of the community, it will be in the usual place inside resources under bonus videos. And uh, I will be getting that there a little bit later on this evening. So um, I think we're about there, Sally. Yeah, I think we're about there. So thank you to everybody who's come along this evening, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world this morning. Um, wherever you are, you know, be happy in your teaching, develop yourself. That's really important. And um, what more can I say? Come and join us in the community because then you just get it <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks so much um, as well to Amy. No problem. For, <laughs> for actually, we, we, have, we have a good broadband signal. <laughs> Just more than what we would have had um, based, based at my house. So, um, and thank you all so much for joining us wherever you have been listening in uh, around the world. And we look forward to seeing you very soon inside the community. Okay, that's all from us for now. Um, thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Bye.